Hi everyone, Darlene here. If you like the videos that you're seeing and you'd like to see more, please visit my card making community site at www.livelovecards.com. I have a lot more videos, tons more card making videos, product reviews, tutorials, 101s. Uh, we have challenges. There's a great forum. It's a fantastic place to be and I hope to see you there. So check it out. Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card. Today's card I made using the Simon Says Stamp April Card Kit. This is the card I made first. I liked this background the best. Um, the kit comes with several different patterns with this gold and uh, craft cardstock. And for this card I'm going to be using the cheetah pattern in the video. It also has a stamp set called Big Birthday Wishes. It has a lot of large sentiments in it. And then for this card, I use the uh, Kiritake Gonzai Tombi watercolor set. That's quite a mouthful. <laughs> On the lid, you can see I put samples. And I usually try to stick with colors that are next to each other on the palette. I've got a kind of a hot pinkish red uh, and orange, and then there's some gold at the bottom. So I'm going to pull these little palettes out and use them. I'll put them back when I'm done. Now I want to show you some of the things I created first. This one I uh, did the watercolor, then I clear embossed some balloons on top. Actually no, I, I stamped it in black, then clear embossed the balloons. I didn't like it that much. This one is just black embossing uh, with watercolor over it and I decided that I thought the white was the best so I went with that one. The first thing I'm going to do is take some Versamark ink and I'm going to stamp it onto some uh, Strathmore 90 pound watercolor paper. I'm going to emboss it with some white embossing powder and I'll heat it to set it. Now I noticed after I was done heating it that there was a hole left and I guess I didn't ink it on my stamp or maybe there was something on my stamp. Um, you can kind of see it there. There's kind of a hole there on the E. So to fix this it's really easy. I have a Versamarker which is the Versamark ink pad in a marker form. So I'm just going to color that little hole with my marker which is clear and then I'll put some white embossing powder. You can see how it sticks to that hole and then I'll uh, heat to set it and uh, you wouldn't even know that it was there. I'm going to try to show you here. It's hard to see, but you can see uh, in the shine that the hole is no longer there. All right, I'm using kind of a medium-sized brush, and it's thin at the top and thicker at the bottom. And the first thing I'm going to do is um, cover my cardstock with water, just a wash of water in kind of the rectangular pattern that I want the color to go to. Now I usually start with the lightest color first, and some people like to spray their watercolor palettes with um, like a water spritzer, but I like to actually add the water with my brush because then I can control exactly how much water is going in there and I can sort of feel how it, how it feels on my brush. Um, and so I'm going to pick up some color and I'm going to drop it here and there and I'm just going to make sure that I've got, you know, orange in uh, all the different areas. I don't leave any bare. Um, and this watercolor is very creamy and it's very vibrant. Even after it dries, it's still pretty vibrant. So once I figure out, once I am done with the orange, I'm going to move on to my hot pinkish red. And you can see because I put some water down on my cardstock first, I'm just tapping the color in there and it's spreading on its own. And I'm just going to make sure I hit all the areas in between. And at first I, I made it sort of smooth on the edges and I'll go back and kind of make them a little bit more jagged. But you sort of have to play with it a little bit. Each card's going to be a little bit different. Um, and you just kind of let the water go where it wants to go. And it'll pretty much stop itself where you ended at your water when you put that first water wash. Now I also find that this watercolor is a little bit more forgiving in that um, it kind of releases a water stain um, a lot easier than some of the other mediums. So um, you can see I'm enlarging my rectangle here and I don't have a problem with that. The uh, color will reactivate on my cardstock without a problem. Um, I did have some pooling because I put a little bit too much water so I just grabbed a tissue and I'm just barely touching my cardstock and I'll pull up some of the color there but then I can just add some more. And I've got a lot of little letters in there, so I'm just going to make sure I tap all the areas underneath there to make sure that I've got color uh, behind it so you'll be able to read it. Now then I decided to make my um, rectangle a little bit larger and then also more jagged because I kind of smoothed out my lines and decided that didn't look as good, so I really wanted it to look a little bit more random. Okay, now I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to stamp the candles and the flames. This is Delicata Gold Ink and uh, I'm going to cut these out. These stamps come with the set. 
And now I'm going to take a baby wipe when it's all dry and I'm going to wipe the, um, the color off of the embossed areas because some of it did get a little bit color on it. And I found that the baby wipe was a little bit too strong and it pulled off some of the color on my cardstock. So I went with a dry tissue and that seemed to work the best. But the nice thing is I just went back in there and added a little bit more color and everything was fine. And now I'm going to uh, put some um, splatters on there. So I'm going to grab some orange and I'm going to tap my brush very lightly with my finger on the top of my brush. Um, and when you load up the paint on your brush, it should come off pretty easily. So I'm going to start with the orange and then I'll move in with this pinkish red. I'm going to tap that. And then finally, actually what I ended up doing, I decided I wanted a little bit more of a bright color. So I grabbed the yellow out of my watercolors and I'm going to put some yellow splatters and then finally I'll finish it off with the gold which is actually a really pretty gold. It's not really a tarnished gold. It's, it's pretty bright. So I'm going to get some on my brush here and I'll tap it. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the splatters that fell on top of the letters just because I like the look of that. So I'm going to put that off to the side to dry. And then once it's dried, I'm going to put my ATG gun right at the very edge because sometimes your paper is going to warp. Well, it will warp when you're doing watercolor. Um, and so by putting the adhesive right at the edge of the cardstock, you can make it really be a little bit less warped looking when you adhere it to your other pieces. And then I'm going to adhere this to a piece of Nina Solar White cardstock, which I like to use as my card base. And it's four and a quarter by five and a half inch folded. Now to put my candles on, I decided to use glue dots. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm taking my paper piercer and I'm folding them in half and then placing them in, uh, onto my candle. And then I'll very lightly put my candle on my cardstock until I decide that it's definitely where I want it and then I'll press down. Now for the final touch I decided to use a Wink of Stella clear glitter pen to add some. It was already shimmery because I used the gold ink but this just added a little bit extra shimmer. And that's the card for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.